Hi, I'm Dr. Rosie Redfield. I'm a professor at the University of British Columbia, and this spring I'll be offering a new course online through Coursera called Useful Genetics. I'm Alana Schick, and I'll be the teaching assistant for this course. This video is an example of the genetics in the news videos that we'll be using to supplement our lecture videos. The topic for today is DNA fingerprinting. And this is something that has been in the news a lot recently. For example, there's a case in France where two suspects are twins. The Innocence Project in the States has used DNA evidence to exonerate over 300 people. And the recent New Delhi rape trial where the defense lawyers are claiming that the DNA evidence isn't valid. So what is it that makes DNA evidence so valuable? Well, for one thing, we all leave traces of our DNA behind us everywhere we go. This DNA is very stable. DNA is, in fact, so stable, it can even be extracted and sequenced from fossils. It's also possible to analyze only very tiny amounts, and even when the DNA is mixed in with a lot of other material, so that samples such as blood spots are excellent evidence. Most importantly, DNA makes good evidence because each person differs from everyone else at many different places. This means that each person has a unique combination of DNA differences. In most countries, all forensic scientists test the same set of carefully chosen DNA differences. The set used in the US, called CODIS, consists of 13 different places in our DNA, called markers, where people are usually different. Each of these 13 markers has many different versions, and this means that there are not just millions or even billions of possible combinations, but trillions of them. Each person has two sets of these 13 markers, one inherited from their father and one inherited from their mother. Because each of the markers is on a different chromosome, the markers are shuffled with every new generation. So the two sets from the father are shuffled into one set in the sperm, and the same for the two sets from the mother. Even if the same parents have multiple children, each child gets a different combination. The only exception is identical twins. Each marker is called a VNTR site for variable number tandem repeat, which contains very short sequences of DNA that are repeated various times. The different versions of the markers contain different numbers of these repeats, resulting in DNA fragments of different lengths. The analysis of DNA fragment length is easily automated. Here is a typical analysis where the positions of the two peaks show the length of, of the two versions of each marker. And this automation makes the analysis very well controlled and highly reproducible. So now that DNA evidence is so reliable, the only serious concern is controlling the chain of custody, making sure that the evidence isn't tampered with. And that's the issue being raised in the New Delhi rape trial. If you'd like to learn more about genetics in the news and about the many other ways that genetics impacts our lives, sign up for our free online course, Useful Genetics, at Coursera.org. We hope to see you there.